another Appalachian Wireless Sports Overtime. Josh McKinney joined as always by Jamie McCracken. Jamie, it's hard to believe there's only one month left in the high school football regular season, but that means some big time district games are coming up soon. It also means basketball seasons close to. I like that. Uh, yeah, some big ones tonight up in Jackson, Brethick County, Estill County get together in class 3A District 7. The Friends of Cold Bowl is always a heated game. I was out there tonight between Harlan County and Letcher Central and you we're at a big district uh, game tonight as well, right? Yeah, Hazard and Pikeville have not played in the same district since 2006, my senior year of high school. That season, Pikeville won the regular season championship only to have Hazard win in the playoffs. Tonight's game is just another chapter in the series' long history. Hazard Way back when you were hosting in high school. number 10 Pikeville, a potential district championship on the line in Class A District 8. Opening drive for the Panthers, A.J. Vanderbeck. With the reverse handoff around the left side, he goes right down the near sideline, 49 yards down to the hazard one yard line. He does all the hard work. Who gets the benefit? Big man Derek Pugh. Actually, AJ's dad told me that little joke. 7 0 <laughs> Pike will you Pike top play contender? Wyatt Battle through the air, throwing deep. Look at the catch made by Chatlin Gerald. Takes it right out of the defender's hands. 14 0. Ensuing hazard drive, Cole Ratliff doing some work, scrambles to the left for a first down pick. Nice pick up inside the Pikeville 10. Very next play, Ratliff finishes the drive with a QB dive. Bulldogs on the board, 14-7. Now 21-7 Pikeville, and the Panthers are adding to the lead. Pugh takes the toss, gets around the edge, into the end zone. Pikeville cruising as we go to the Highlands Black and Blue Clinic scoreboard. The Panthers, a huge win on the road, 56-28 over the Hazard Bulldogs. Somerset hosting Caverna. There's Robbie Lucas, our man, Josh. Uh, and early Briar jumpers jump out to the early lead up 28-0 in the second. And, well, you can't do that on a punt. Fumble, 30-0 Somerset after the safety. Next Somerset possession, Jordan Doan waltzes. It's not a Somerset highlight unless you see Jordan Doan. For real. He looked like he was dancing to a Fetty Wap there a little bit. Scoring continued. Castle Hatcher this time to a wide open Josh Cornett. It was 44 0. Briar Jumpers at that point go to the Highlands Black and Blue Clinic scoreboard. Somerset rolls to a win over Caverna. 44 24, the final at Clark Field. Let's head to Jackson for a Class 3A District 7 matchup between Breathitt County, the Bobcats, and the Estill County Engineers. First play from scrimmage, Estill County's Cordell Day hurdles two players on his way to a 16-yard gain, but the drive would stall after a Breathitt County three and out. The Engineers strike first. Day takes the handoff, looks for a moment like the play is over, but it's not. Day somehow stays on his feet 24 yards later. It's a touchdown, 8-0 after the two-point conversion. Still in the first quarter, this time it's Blake Francisco for the Engineers. He gets loose for a 37-yard scoring scamper. Say that five times fast. They take a 16-0 lead. Back comes Breathitt County. Cameron Stacy hooks up with Trey Noble for 30 yards. A couple of plays later, the direct snap goes to who? James Fletcher Collins. Just thought that was your cue. Oh, my bad. Five, I know three names, three names. Five yards out, 16-8, Estel. But the engineers, though, would respond. I got this one. This is third day, and right? three. Day okay, says, I, I see your one. three. I'll raise you 57 more. Finally dragged down after 60 yards. Estill would punch it in. Ensuing drive. Bobcat Stacy fires over to, to Noble. Makes the catch. Goes 27 yards for the score in Breathitt County. Improves to 2 and 0 in district play. The Bobcats knock off Estill County tonight. Final score 48 to 38. Well, coming up, Leslie County looks to stay perfect while Allen Central tries to bounce back from a tough loss last week. And we'll go to Baxter, Letcher Central, Harlan County. It's the Friends of Cobol between those two. It is now time for tonight's Fans in the Stands t-shirt toss out sponsored by Eastern Kentucky University. Letcher County Central fans. Packing in Coal Miners Memorial Stadium down in Harlan County to cheer on their Cougars against the Harlan County Black Bears. Highlights of this game coming up very shortly. Letcher County Central tonight's fans in the stand sponsored by Eastern Kentucky University. Well, shortly, Josh is right now. Before last season, Harlan County had won five straight Friends of Coal Bowls between or over Letcher Central. But last year, the Cougars took it away from the Black Bears, and tonight they're trying to bring it back to Baxter. And it's clear I'll on the 
West Virginia's own Brian Paisley gets Best a... Best pregame in the mountains. That's right. Oh, Brian Paisley gets us started with the uh, Friends of Cole Highlight Pack. First drive of the game, Tyree Simmons. Oh, no. Let's see who can pick this fumble up first. Yeah, not me. Nobody not me. wants to. Well, we finally got one. Cougar ball after the fumble, and they're jacked up after that. Uh, but the Cougars couldn't score in the first drive. Still first quarter. We go to their second drive of the night for Letcher. Nick Sergent finds his man, Isaiah Tyree. Oh, 30-yard gain downfield. First down, one of 17 first downs on the night for Letcher Central. Two plays later is Jay Will. Jalen Williams. Uh, the turf pebbles are flying in the air. That's usually a good thing. Uh, he goes 36 to the house for the touchdown. 6 nothing Letcher, though. No one better tonight than this kid, Dylan Cornett. 46 of his 328 yards right here. Enjoy. Five touchdowns of the night for Cornett. The Black Bears 1-1 one one in district play as we go to the Highlands Black and Blue Clinic scoreboard. Harlan County wins by 10. 45-35 and puts up 522 total yards of offense. Black Bears at Whitley next week. Big win for the Black Bears. The Raceland Rams met the Lawrence County Bulldogs in what turned out to be quite the mud bath tonight. Early in the game, Rams quarterback Nathaniel Davidson decides to keep it himself. Gains a couple of yards before being taken down by the Bulldog defense. Still in the first, a quick pass to Carson Christian, but he doesn't get very far. Rams don't give up early and will eventually get their first drive or first touchdown. But the Bulldogs answer with a handoff to Timmy Dalton, who will take Timmy. it all the way. Touchdown Bulldogs put them up seven to six. The kickoff back to Raceland doesn't last long. The Rams fumble the handoff and will give it right back to Lawrence County. But look at this with 35 seconds to go in the game. Raceland recovered a Lawrence County fumble, returned it for a touchdown to go up 26 20 and the Rams would win by that score. And speaking of a mud pit, they might as well play it in a pig pen tonight. Uh, Allen Central, Leslie County. Leslie up 14-0 in the second quarter, and this is uh, Dylan Cottle. He looks deep. It's picked off, and then after the half, Leslie County Junior Austin Smith, number 28, will run one in. Oh, this is Dylan Cottle. Here we go. Oh, that's picked off. There's the interception. A rough time in the mud, though. You know, your last highlight pack, it wasn't that muddy. It was actually pretty muddy here. Leslie up 14 0 in the second quarter. And uh, after the half, this is junior Austin Smith, number 28, takes it in for six. The Eagles up 20 0. Allen Central's Jesse Brown gets a pick, though, in the middle of the third quarter. But as we go to the Highlands Black and Blue Clinic scoreboard, Rebels would be shut out in this one. Back to back shutouts by the Leslie County defense, 27 0. Nothing. The final over the Allen Central Rebels. Staying on the Highlands Black and Blue Clinic scoreboard, Knox Central takes care of business tonight over Clay County, 50 to 8 to improve to 4 and 3 on the season. Wayne County and Rock Castle County. Wayne County defeats Rock Castle by 8, 21 to 13. Rock Castle falls to 1 and 5 on the season. Clinton County and Lynn Camp, 28 to 26. The Wildcats lose their third game of the year. Well, still to come on the Appalachian Wireless Sports Overtime, the number two Belfry Pirates and Cabell Midland out of Huntington meet in a battle of unbeatens. I had to back up there for a second. I was too close to the camera. Harley, also, the Harlan Green Dragons look to rebound from its first loss of the season last week when it welcomes in the Eagles of Riveco, Virginia. My name is Grant Kaiser, and you're watching Sports Overtime. We know that we're hunting for bigger games. We're fishing for bigger fish, right? But tonight, you got to take care of business. If we start thinking about down the road, there won't be a down the road. And you're going to find out as you go old, as you grow old, just how important it is, the time that you're in there. You, you're living right now where everybody would love to be. They give anything they have to run out that time one more time. But we can. But you guys can. Tonight, did you know something? They wouldn't want to relive and go back to that tunnel and think they played poorly or they didn't give us their all. So you have literally the chance that nobody else has to go out there and play football on Friday night. The greatest feeling that you'll ever have in your entire life. You're with a band of brothers tonight, guys. Play hard every day. 
Play hard every stinking play. Play smart. Play to the whistle. That ball's on the ground, go after it. Play hard. Play clean. Play ferocious. Play tenacious. Play smart. Get after them. Get after them. Get after them. Get after them. Deliver the things they don't like. Deliver it to them. Hit them hard every play. Play with that physicality that nobody likes. Except us. Play tonight like Johnson Central. Go me. And play for yourself. And play for every doggone person out there that wish they could be playing tonight. In the rain, in the snow, in the mud. I'd give everything I could to go back and play one more game in the mud. And I can. So you guys, you got to play. Tonight's a great night for you. These are the greatest memories you'll ever have. The number two Belfry Pirates have been rolling this season. 5-0 and entering tonight's game with Cabell Midland. The only problem for the belt for Belfry is that the Knights were also undefeated and ranked number one in all of West Virginia. Both teams unbeaten. The rain subsided. Let's play some football. Midland advantageous early. They forced a fumble on the option and it's night football. Wouldn't take long to capitalize either. They were always good when I was in West Virginia. Devin Gross. Stapleton, biggest school in West Virginia, finds a hole on the right side, then busts it outside. No pirate can catch him. 63 yards for the score, seven nothing. More defense, Midlands, Reese Donahue, the big hit, oh, another goodness. forced fumble. Knights take over. That's what you call getting jacked up. From the 28 yard line, Caperton Humphrey takes the pitch, picks his way into the end zone, 14 nothing. More Knights in the second quarter. Devin Stapleton again, he's hit, but no big deal. Spin move into the end zone, 21 nothing. U Pike top play contender. Belfry doesn't throw it much, but when they do, they're successful. Noah Corbett to Austin Woolham, 70 yards. Belfry on the board, 21-7. Midland now up 28-7, but from the 39, trying to get one more. Tyler Brown up to Jacob Hendricks. Tight wow. ropes into the end zone. <laughs> that guy we, got lit up. As we go to the Highlands <laughs> Black and Blue Clinic scoreboard, <laughs> Belfry suffers its first loss of the season, 49-7 at the hands of Cavill Midland out of Huntington. Oh my gosh, that poor camera guy. Hey, 50th year for my man, Charlie Kirk, rocking the zebra stripes. Joshua, what do you plan to do here in about 50 years? <laughs> I couldn't tell you. Well, Charlie, uh, he still has some wheels. I don't know if you have those types of wheels. Um, Harlan uh, hosting Ryko, Virginia in a slot pit. This first play is Kendall Brock, first down. And then later, uh, very next play, Noah Bus Row. Busrow catches the screen, runs it in. Harlan with no problem tonight. Here are the Highlands Black and Blue Clinic scoreboard. Green Dragons 5-1 and one after a shutout win tonight over Ryko, Virginia. The guy that got hit was actually the sheriff in that Belfry game. <laughs> Tough field so conditions nice. at Pulaski County. Made this one look like a mud wrestling contest. Stoops. Mark Stoops in the house there to watch the game with Henry Clay. First, Riley Hall goes up top. To who else but Jake Johnson. Not from State Farm. Nice catch just <laughs> down at the two yard line. Two plays later, Christian Holman lined up in the Wildcat formation, takes it in for the touchdown. First one of the game. Following a Henry Clay turnover, Hall connects with his other favorite target, George Gregory, also not of State Farm. Far sideline for the touchdown. This one was a route all the way. Number one, Pulaski County rolls the Blue Devils 43 to nothing. The final score staying on the Highlands Black and Blue Clinic scoreboard Pineville over McCreary Central. I'm sorry, North Laurel defeats Whitley County 38 to 8. Number five, North Laurel still perfect 7 and 0. Pineville over McCreary Central 56 to 6. Powell County defeats Morgan County back to back district wins for the Pirates 28 to 6. The final score in West Liberty. Much more to come on the Appalachian Wireless Sports over time. But as we go to break, here's a look at this week's Alice Lloyd College. Mountain Top 10. All right, our McDonald's Student Athlete of the Week is Courtney Baker. She was a senior at Bell County High School. She had a 4.0 GPA. She was a member of the National Honor Society and Beta Club, and she was on the Student Council. She was also a member of the Lady Cat Varsity Softball Team. Congrats to Courtney Baker, our Student Athlete of the Week, sponsored by McDonald's. How about some Long John Silvers? Our Long John Silvers catch of the day back to Hazard. 
Pikeville QB Wyatt battle throwing deep and Chatlin Gerald making the tough grab, just stealing it away from the Bulldog defender, walks in for the easy Panther touchdown. Big win on the road for Pikeville. Chatlin Gerald, tonight's Long John Silver's catch of the day. Time to get you set for this weekend's football action with the Saturday Slate sponsored all season long by Union College. For the second straight season, the Kentucky Wildcats are three and one to start the year, but they believe they have yet to play their best game. The Cats played well last week in a bounce back effort, beating a ranked opponent for the first time since 2010 in Missouri. Head coach Mark Stoops likes the direction his team is headed, but he's telling his players that don't worry about all that outside noise, guys. We still got to win this week against EKU. Our resolve has showed throughout the course of this year. And again, we have not played perfect football by any stretch, but, but I believe we have showed uh, great resolve all year. And um, that I'm happy with. I think you could build on that. And, uh, and you know, our team has had a tough attitude, I tell you, you know, and uh, I think they've, you know, their approach is better and more consistent. And now we'll see because, again, everybody will tell them they're real good and we'll see if we have a good week or not because we just need to put our head down and go to work and develop. The football Cats will host Eastern Kentucky tomorrow night in what will be just the fourth meeting all time between the two programs. Kentucky has won the previous three meetings. Game time set for 7.30 p.m. on the SEC Network alternate channel. Kentucky is 3-1 and one on the air while the Colonels are 2-1 and one entering the game. A little more locally at the college level tomorrow. Union welcomes in top-ranked uh, team in the nation in NAIA, and that's Lindsey Wilson. Uh, Blue Raiders, which first time ever they've been ranked number one. Yeah, the Blue Raiders 3-0 and on the season. Union 0-3, still looking for their first win. But they've done some good things to build on in those three losses. The offense, for example, has shown it can move the ball. But turnovers have proven to be costly. However, head coach Zach Willis, not one of those guys who likes to find moral victories and losses. I think you can look at the scores of the games and, and look at who we're playing. You know, and say, okay, you know, where are the performances at? You can look at the statistics. We outgained uh, two of the opponents, including our last one, in every category. We had the ball for over 40 minutes in the last game on offense. Uh, so there are a lot of positives to be gained. I'm not really into moral victories. I'm more into fundamentals, blocking, tackling, ball security. That's going to be it for tonight's show, but tomorrow a big show on Sports Overtime Saturday night. Jamie will be here. Lauren will be back. She was uh, out sick tonight, so mm -hmm. wish her all the best. But until then, from everyone here in sports and production, have a good night. Thank you for watching. Come back tomorrow, Lauren and I. Woo!